God's getting ready to turn a bitter season into a sweet season, okay? So when God creates this oil, this anointing oil, whatever the oil touches, it changes. Naomi could not recognize that she was in a bitter season, but she was in a bitter season for a reason. Because here's the thing about a bitter season. We always think that God is about the destiny and about the promise and, and, and the palace, but God is more about the difficulty than he is about the destination. Because you don't learn anything about God in your blessing place. You learn who God is in your difficult place. It's in your fight that you become focused. It's in your fight, it's in your hard time that your eyes are open and you become diligent and ready to respond and ready to study and ready to worship because you've got your boots on, you've got your armor on. You're looking for that answer. Okay, so you don't arrive at great places unless you have great battles. That's why it's been so hard. Another thing about the myrrh tree is every myrrh tree is different from the other tree. Every myrrh tree has its own process. We don't do that. We don't all have a great season and a bad season all at the same time. We've got some people here that are going through a really good season. We've got some people that are really going through a bitter season. We've got people going through a hard season. The myrrh tree has its own process, just like every one of us has our own process. M Naomi had to go through her own process. Why? Because God was cultivating her anointing. That's why she says, call me bitter. But Naomi didn't discern that what God was doing for Ruth, God was doing for her. But they were just in different seasons in the same time. Because God is not, he's not confined to time not about the time it's about being in the right place and it's about being in the right position because God works outside of time so as it is in the natural with the mercury so it is in the spirit with us that's why don't ever look at somebody else's anointing or somebody else's blessing and think I should have that because you can't because you're not in their season and you're not in their process we're going to get to the same place, but we're not going to take the same journey because we have not been wired the same way. The same stuff that got into you, it didn't get into me. You ever watch two people that can go through the same horrific act and then they'll come out and they'll act completely different. They'll have completely different. Why? Because each person is their own person. They have their own process and there is a cost for your anointing that God is working out in your life. I can't give you my anointing because I can't make you go through my process. You don't want to go through my process. You don't want to give and to do what I had to do to do what I'm doing because you couldn't handle it. Nor could I handle what you had to go through for your anointing. It's why when Jesus, it started for Jesus in Gethsemane. When the great drops of blood started coming off of his forehead. And he said, God, is there another way? I don't want to do. He was in a bitter season. He was in a bitter season. He says, please, is there another way? But then he says, nevertheless, let it be done unto me. See, there's something about your destiny that God is going to tell you, you've got to drink a bitter cup. That's why Jesus said, pick your cross up and follow me. Because until you get into the press, which is Gethsemane, the olive press, and you are squeezed, you cannot get oil until you are squeezed. It is in that testing, in that fiery trial, that God begins to move in your life. And that's why when you're in a bitter season, you've got to understand that you're coming into a sweet season right after. Okay. So, and here's another point too. What's causing your bitterness and what causes the veil to come over your eyes What's causing the bitterness, the root of what's causing your, biz, your, your bitterness does not know your process. 
okay what's called that pain doesn't understand the process that's why it gets so confusing what do you do when you're overwhelmed the first you're overwhelmed you can't afford to make a wrong move so I need you to write this down the five right moves one of the first right moves he made was he turned to God write that down the first right move he made was he turned to God he didn't turn to friends he didn't turn to his military capabilities. He didn't turn to his weapons. He didn't turn to human reasoning. He didn't turn to social media to take it out on social media. He didn't turn to, to, to rant to anybody. He didn't turn to his followers. He didn't start developing a plan. There's nothing wrong with the plan. Everybody needs a plan. But before you develop a plan, you need to pray. And as you pray, God will give you his plan and not your plan. Okay, so you got to turn to prayer before you turn to your plan. Prayer should be our first choice and not our last resort. I said prayer should be our first choice and not our last resort. Oftentimes, we wait till we get to the point where prayer is the last thing that we can do. We've all heard people say, well, all we can do now is just you heard somebody say that before all we can do now is just pray we've done tried everything we know and so all we're gonna do right now is we're just gonna put it in the hands of God and we're going to pray no we should have prayed before you ever done anything else prayer should have been our first choice and not our last resort I'm, I'm gonna say it till somebody hears it today God is saying you're not praying to me you're asking everybody else you're trying to work it in your head you're trying to figure out how you can do it you're trying to make your next move and God said stop a minute and talk to me about it you should go straight to God and say God I got trouble coming from everywhere I've got financial trouble I've got health and health issues I got family trouble I got emotional trouble Lord I'm spiritually in trouble and I need your help somebody say I need your help that's what Jay Jehoshaphat did. Jehoshaphat said, not only am I going to pray about it, he said, but I'm going to get this entire nation to pray. He said, the country, in, in, in verse 4 in, in the message, he says, the country of Judah united in seeking God's help. They came from all of the cities of Judah to pray to God. See, once he gets the whole nation to pray, once he gets, he, he gets everybody, all, all the national leaders to come together and pray, then he opens up his mouth, okay? First, he's just praying to God. Second, he gets everybody else in there to pray with him. But then when everybody gets there, he publicly opens his mouth and he starts calling on the name of the Lord. Sometimes you can't just pray in your head and you can't just pray in your heart. Sometimes you gotta open your mouth and let everybody around you hear you call on God. Sometimes he wants to hear your voice. It ain't good enough for me to pray for you. Some situations you gotta pray for yourself. But I dare you to apply this to your life. He focused on God and not his problem. Have you, have you, have you ever asked anybody the question like, have, have you ever just looked at them and said, hey, how are you doing? And their answer is, be, will be like, well, under the circumstances, I'm, I'm doing okay. Well, number one, why are you under the circumstances? You need to be on top of the circumstances, okay? Not under, but on top, all right? Circumstances are like a mattress. If you get on top of it, you'll rest. If you get underneath it, you're gonna suffocate. Woo, tell somebody get on top get on top so when you need when you pray you need to turn your focus to uh, off of the problem and turn your focus on to, to the solution turn your focus on to God and if you continue here's why because if you continue to look at the negative if you continue to focus on the problem where the focus goes the power flows and what was little becomes big 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 and bigger so if you focus on the lack the lack is going to get bigger if you focus on the problem the problem will get bigger if you focus on the negative all the negativity is going to get bigger and you will continue to feel overwhelmed so Jehoshaphat made the decision in prayer and he asked it four ways I